It always comes to this. back again to do another tattoo progress update today where i last left off i had had my uh neck passed for the second time with the color on top of uh white and black on black there's four different colors in here we have uh really red um uh blue sky turquoise mixed with white and uh pretty purple uh, i believe is the other color and um, it took quite a bit better this time. It was a little bit murky when it was healing. I was like, what is happening? All the colors were kind of cloudy and it was hard to see what the hell was happening <laughs> around day two or three. It got kind of not dark, just kind of weird looking, like translucent almost. And I would assume that that's the effect of the white underneath mixing with the color, but um, because there was quite a bit of white in those, it was a different one for me. I haven't seen that before. So um, it was giving me a little bit of like not concern, certainly never concern, but just kind of confusion, like what's going on with those colors? And it ended up coming out um, very striking. So uh, we have a good, easy healed result as usual. And I also had my chest done, bring this down uh, the day prior. This is all healed up and it uh, looks pretty good. Really gave it that pop that I was looking for, especially in here. Um, there's a few spots in the black that didn't go perfect, and there's also um, the orange mixed with the red we used, and we got a pretty um, orangey red, more orange than red, I would say. But I think if we hit that again with quick pass, it'll go more red. Same thing with the eyes. We used yellow, but they were already uh, a couple passes of like a steely sort of blue over black. So, of course, when you mix blue with yellow, you're going to get some kind of green, but it still did maintain more of the yellow balance. Uh, once again, confirming what I've been saying, that you can cover any color with any color, and uh, certainly black with any color. That's, that's been a given for a while if you watch this channel. But I'm happier with how it looks, and we're going to get into the, all these tentacles again uh, here in a few weeks. So... Um, chest piece is kind of uh i think it'll be one or two more sessions i don't know how quick we can bang out the sides i just want to reline them recolor them more or less the same thing that i did with the center uh put some new depth into it and breathe some new life into it so uh, i've got another session coming up with terry today it's going to be a pretty fun one i think it's going to be pretty quick um this is just a minor tweak and it's the last bump on the road before we start uh working on the back piece and when I get into the back piece video that might be a two-part I'm not sure there's gonna be a lot to say I, I always like to you know wait until I have something done to talk about it but it's gonna be a pretty big session I'm planning on doing uh, all the layout in that one session so um, that's probably gonna be like something like five or six hours of lining and we're going with a really thick line so uh, could be could be a fun time then again this is coming from a person who said his back blacked out twice i don't really i'm not really sweating it but part of the reason why i'm going in the direction i am with my back is because i do find some parts of it more sensitive than others and so i don't really want to be pissing around on it for you know 80 plus sessions theoretically and uh elaborate like my sleeve here with Rick, which this has basically been like the the biggest undertaking. I think probably this will be the most elaborate, most insane sleeve that has ever been done from a from a conceptual standpoint. I don't think you're going to be able to tell me about a more insanely intricate sleeve. Um, you might be able to find one that's more detailed, but it wouldn't be over black. And that's what's made this so insane. Because even over, uh, on normal skin, this would have been an undertaking. Like this, just looking at this picture of this, doesn't really give weight to how much is in it. 
And you close up on it, there's still new details I'm finding every day. There's little tweaks and colors and stuff in there that it's just, it's impossible to even register all at once from afar. And when you're looking at this thing, it has this kind of like, like, I don't know. It's got this different texture to it that you just can't get with just a single pass color or like not single pass, but like one tone of color. And though the rose sleeve from afar is far more striking, you readable, identifiable imagery, it is not the elaborate, uh, huge, insane piece and project that the Cthulhu uh, sleeve here is. And even when people ask me what style it is, it's hard to even describe because it's got so many different elements to it. It's uh, <clears throat> comic, horror, bioorganic, you know. Clearly it's it's part blackout as well. It's full color, you know. There's a, there's a lot of different things you could put towards it. But as it goes on, it looks it's more and more graphic because of the bold line um, and all of the heavy black emphasis to um, dictate flow there's a lot of stuff in here that like even the stuff that hasn't like been completely fleshed out yet it's all about the movement of it as well and that's where it becomes sort of bioorganic because a lot of the decisions that are made are done so to indicate the movement of the piece with the body and stuff like this and it's just a lot of stuff that like if you really look into how this was laid out it's it's really something special and that's why I haven't minded doing the work on it I have. There are days I feel like um, I'm living in Groundhog Day, where that was the 46th session. We just had the 46th session in here. I didn't feel the need to really preface, but um, you can see, if you look down here, there isn't a whole lot of difference between um, healed and fresh on this third pass. All of that black stayed in because we're covering part of color as well. So a lot of this is now color on, or black on color over black. So whenever you get into that territory, I find the black is generally more receptive. And when you got borders put in, um, it seems like the colors, they thin out less. Same as the black. Like you can see here that this is kind of barely in there. It's there. But if we put the red velvet over like this black here, that's going to separate everything and it's going to have a longer lifespan. It's going to be clearer to the eye. So whenever we get down there, that's one of the things that I want to address um, is you got to kind of bolster things with other elements to keep them apart. It's the same thing that's happening with my hand right now. There are places that are better and worse on this sleeve. You know, it's been this, this like constant kind of like back and forth, try to build this thing. Uh, and, see here we have this nice and black right now but I think because there's no color bordering it it's probably going to uh, thin out again and by the time we get down there to do the red we'll need to run that color again that'll probably be the fourth or fifth or black again that'll probably be the fourth or fifth time that that's been the case not because it's completely gone but because it muddies up a bit when there's no um, supporting structure around it it's the same thing with white as well if you don't put things next to it to give it emphasis it's not super super striking uh, which is part of what i'm always telling people is like you really do need contrast and in the places we have it it's a perfect heel you know it, it looks striking later uh there are still some parts that need to be fixed up here um there's some spots that rick has been finding harder to work with than others this one in here there's there's little spots all over that sleeve where it's like oh yeah that needs to be repaired or oh yeah that needs to be finished or tweaked or whatever the fuck but overall the sleeve is coming together in a very positive direction and it's absolutely insane to look at and i've been seeing uh on my stories on instagram where um you know i was doing i think around this time last year i was on the third or fourth pass on it so it's been that long that i've been working on this thing but that was kind of my intention with it all along. And I knew that people would get bored and tired and drop off along the way. I've seen my views on the videos in regards to this piece fluctuate a lot. I think that there's, uh, there's a lot of burnout that happens. And, and like when the aggregate of attention span for all social media platforms, that does include YouTube, 
is 23 seconds. I'm not making that up. That is the aggregate attention span. Um, it's it's not hard to understand that when you're doing this many sessions on a piece that people are going to check in and out of it, you know. I'm asking a lot of people's attention span. I did the same thing when I, I did the Remy Show podcast. It's like sometimes it's just about what you're doing, though. Like it's not going to be the most entertaining thing in the world to listen to an update on the 46th session on a sleeve because most people want a sleeve done in a day. You know, most people want to go visit an artist um, that they like and hope that they get the sleeve done in a session or two. Whereas this has been anything but that it's been the complete and total reverse it's been very counterculture even in the the way that it looks it's very counterculture it's like no one would no one would think to do this you know it would be what what the world thinks is doable over black versus what um we're doing there's some huge percentage of people who think nothing is doable and the ones who do think something's doable are doing you know basic line work or you're seeing these like one-off color on black pieces become fairly popular you're not really seeing too much large-scale work being done and it's because it's it's a bit like being asked to slay a dragon you know it's it's this huge unwieldy nightmarish creature that no human should be able to bring to heal and that's what we've been we've been doing is we've been taming this big dragon so there in my mind this piece is less about looking good fast and more about proving that you can do this you can do any insane thing and i've already proven that you can heal work over black this had to be about something else this had to be about a little bit like what happened with my torso where it's it's more like it's not just that you can tattoo over black it's also that you can do more or less any style you want if you've got the patience you know you can um you can do any image you like at any level of complexity if you're diligent enough and people think that i'm getting freebies in here something i'm not paying for i have paid for every session on this rick has a man of vices he's got all kinds of issues he's got all kinds of problems and he needs money to fuel those habits so He's not working for free. I've been paying for all of this. I've probably got something like 16 grand, 17 grand in this. I'm not paying what I would be um, originally, but I put in a lot of time and money into this. And I've called this sleeve my magnum opus in the past, and I've had some people um, cut some jokes like, oh, yeah, what are you doing? You're just laying there. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't. I guarantee you, you would not do it. Most people would not do 46 sessions on this sleeve and be happy with the fact and be okay with the fact that it's not done yet and be excited about session 47 where we tackle this small section of elaborate full color on black that's supposed to be impossible and probably won't heal perfect everywhere. You know, most people wouldn't be excited to do that. You can say that means I'm stupid. You can say that means I'm crazy. You can say whatever you want, but you wouldn't do it. Most people would not do that. So this sleeve probably doesn't happen without Remy being involved in it. It just doesn't. Rick wouldn't be able to get away with being Rick for this long with most people. You know how I know that? I've seen what happens. People get tired of the process and they fall off. There are people who will come back to work with him four or five years down the road after they got to a point on a sleeve like two or three sessions in and they gave up i'm not making that up two or three sessions in it's like oh i can't do any more of this it's too much that's what happens for most people they get tired at some point and they stop which you can see in like i said the the retention of viewers on videos regarding this sleeve it goes up and down and most people really only want to check in for the the big like shocking looking ones or like the really dynamic change they're not there for the the nuts and bolts and seeing how the sausage is made so much you know um whereas i enjoy seeing how the sausage is made and part of what's made me more attached to this sleeve in a lot of ways than i am to this one 
the reason why I, I like I could see myself bulldozing over this one day and making another sleeve. I really could. I'm not thinking about that actively. I have too much on my plate to consider that. But part of the reason is like there's some sunk cost, which for anyone who doesn't understand sunk cost fallacy is it's like you put a lot of money, a lot of time into something um, and you're dedicated to it now. You feel like it would be um, invalidating your time or your money that you put into this thing if you uh, were to stop doing it or get rid of it or something like that. I am very aware of that that as a, as a factor. But it's it's more about understanding what it took to get there it gives you appreciation for for the art more than the picture itself it's the same reason why i don't think that most of those anesthetic tattoos like those people aren't going to give a fuck about those tattoos those are the most likely to be covered up tattoos that are being done it's because they have no relationship to the piece they have no appreciation for what that is they have zero understanding of what it takes to get there they just wanted to buy a new shirt the problem is like ta changing your shirt is a little harder with tattoos it's not impossible but they've essentially bought they've purchased a new item of clothing you know whereas with this it's like you're present for every one of those you know you're present and aware of every one of those and there's times when i myself am just like what have i done and i really wouldn't have it any other way to be honest because that's kind of my job now in my mind not not because it's paying my bills but because i've set that out as a goal to see what is the limit how much can you do how many passes can the skin take and my skin texture hasn't changed at all since we started this it was as rough as it is now when it was black you know um how much can the skin forgive how much ink can it show uh what is the saturation point like when does it stop getting brighter and bolder with each pass? There's all kinds of questions that I may never live long enough to see the answers to, but those are the things that make me love and appreciate this sleeve. And that's what makes it so that I can do, you know, 46 sessions on this thing and still be thinking, oh yeah, we're just over halfway. And that's realistic, by the way. I think I'm probably going to finish my back piece with Terry maybe before I finish the sleeve. And that shouldn't be a thing, but that's what I signed on for with this thing. And that's the level of complexity I wanted it to have. I wanted... Does it seem impossible? Does it seem completely unachievable? Then that's what we're doing. That's what we're going for. We're going for tiny details that will probably be eaten up by black um, a million times. You're going to have to dig out and layer in. You know, we're going for an absurd amount of complexity and like all kinds of style blending and just the most elaborate nonsense the tattoo world will have ever seen. We're going for a product that almost no one will understand. I still have so many people that ask me what it even is. And uh, that's kind of what I think a tattoo is. I think tattoos are something that you work on. I don't think that there's something you buy off a shelf. I don't like that mindset. I couldn't be any more anti that. I'm Mr. Journey, I'm not Mr. Product. So for the people who want a nice pretty sleeve, I don't recommend this at all. But this, this is much more doable. This is, you know, we've done something like 16, 17 sessions on this overall. But it was finished at 10 originally with the white on black and black on black. So, I mean, that's totally doable for someone who doesn't like getting tattooed that much. But all these additions I've done with the spider web and boldening things and tweaking things and changing it to full color and all that, that's all just, that's all bonus stuff that we really probably didn't need to do. I just wanted to do because I, I always feel like if you love a sleeve, why not make it better, <laughs> you know? Anyway, I'll uh, talk to you guys again here tomorrow. Have a great day.